to define the probability of rolling a 2 or a 5 with one number cubed. Now, a 2 has six sides. This is another word for seeing a die or dice. So I want to find the total number of possibilities, the total number of outcomes to roll one die is 6. And the probability of rolling a 2 or a 5 is two ways of doing this. You need to draw out your possibilities. Remember that the word or means addition and probability. So we have the probability of getting a 2, which is 1 out of 6, plus, because the or means addition, the probability of getting a 5 out of 6, which is also 1 out of 6. And that gives you 2 out of 6. Now, many of you have problems um, with the test about remembering how to add or multiply fractions together. With addition and subtraction, remember, first you have to do denominator, which in this case, which is 2, 6, and then you add the numerators, but do not add the denominators. So 1 plus 1 equals 2, but 6 just stays at 6. It's not 12. Okay. Number 2, I have 15 pennies in my pocket. Of those pennies, 3 are Canadian. Suppose I take a penny out of my pocket at random and I find the probability of the penny not being Canadian. Again, there are a couple of different ways of doing this. You know that there's 15 pennies and 3 are Canadian. And do it that way and figure out that there are 12 uh, pennies that are not Canadian. And put that over your denominator, which is the total number of pennies, which is 15. Again, you could reduce this, divide both sides by 3. You don't have to. Okay. The other way would be to Remember that the rule for the probability of something not occurring is 1 minus the probability of it occurring. So we could do 1 minus probability of being Canadian, which is 3 out of 15. This gives you the same answer. Just in a slightly different way of thinking about it. And we'll see that same logic in question number 7. So far in these questions, you could have answered all these by drawing them if you wanted to, like I did with number one, drawing the actual dice. Number three, you put the names of all the students in their class in a paper bag. There are 14 boys and 20 girls. If you draw a name at random, what is the probability of it being a boy's name? Many of you were able to find the numerator for this fraction, which is simply the number of boys some of you messed up in finding the denominator. I think you rushed through this a little bit too quickly without checking your work. The denominator is the total number of students. Some of you had 20 here, but in fact there are 20 plus 14. There are 34 students. And again, you could reduce this. You don't have to for the test, but you can. Anytime you find a fraction that has a common denominator, I'm sorry, a common factor, you can divide by that factor and reduce your fraction. Number four, a survey of teenagers found the music preferences listed below. If you pick a teenager at random, what is the probability of rock? Okay. This one is essentially is already drawn out for you. I'm given a table with the data in it. I'm trying to find the rock. So my numerator is going to be the number of rocks, seven. My denominator comes from adding up these numbers. So you have to be a little bit careful about how you're adding. I like what some of you did. You added them one at a time and wrote down the sum. So I'll do that here. 15 plus 5 is 20, plus 7 is 27, plus 6 is 33, plus 6 is 39, plus 4 is 43. So you get 7 out of 43, which is now irreducible. We'll just be the prime number. So it's done. 5. A bag contains 3 green marbles and 8 white marbles. Suppose a marble is randomly selected. What is the probability of picking a white marble? So again, we're trying to find the numerator being the number of desired outcomes, in this case, white marble, and there are eight of them. The denominator comes from the total number of marbles. In this case, there are three plus eight, which is 11. That's irreducible. Number six, a jar contains 45 red candies and 60 
black candy. Suppose a candy is selected at random. What is the probability of not selecting a red candy? Again, here we have the probability of an event not occurring. There are two ways of doing this. You can either mentally add up the number of outcomes that are not what you're looking for, in this case, ones that are not red, while there are six people, and divide that again by the total number of outcomes, which in this case is 45 plus 60, 105. I should mention here I had a student who somehow had these together and got 103. Be careful with your addition. Check your work. Huh? Um, you don't have to reduce this. If you wanted to, you could. You could divide both sides. Let's see. Five goes into both. That would give me 15 over 21. I'm sorry, that's not correct. 12 over 21. Which is further reducible by 3. Number seven, the probability of winning a particular game at the game place is one out of four. Find the probability of not winning the game. This tests your knowledge of the third law of probability, which is that the probability of an event occurring plus the probability of the event not occurring is equal to one. So we can take one and the total possibility of anything is 100 percent. We can subtract that. From that, the probability of one of the game left with the probability of not winning the game. Alright? Three, four. Most of you've got that right. Congratulations. We'll go on to page two in the next video.